Hello and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to upgrade the hard drive in a 15-inch aluminum PowerBook G4. We've already gathered our materials, shut down the PowerBook, and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to close the PowerBook and flip it over. To remove the battery, use a coin to turn the battery lock to the unlocked position until the battery pops up slightly and you can remove it. Next, remove these four Phillips screws holding in the memory cover. To remove the memory modules, gently pull outward on the retaining tabs until the top module pops up, then slide it out of its slot. Then repeat the process for the second module. Once you've done that, remove these two Phillips screws in the memory compartment. Next, remove these two Phillips screws inside the battery bay. You can now remove the four longer Phillips screws in the bottom along the hinge edge. After that, remove the three Phillips screws on the side with the fire wire and video ports. Then remove the three on the other side. You can now remove the two pairs of screws along the hinge edge. Note that each pair has two screws of different lengths. You can now flip your power book over and open it up. In the corners near the screen are a pair of Torx T6 screws which also need to be removed. To remove the top case, lift up on the front of your power book and gently push on the underside of the top cover through the battery compartment. Work your way across using your nylon tool to loosen the clips holding the case on. You may hear some popping noises as the clips are detached. Once you've loosened all the clips, carefully lift up the front edge of the cover to reveal the inside. You'll see a cable connecting the keyboard and trackpad to the logic board. Gently lift up on the connector to detach it. You can then set the top case aside. The hard drive is located in the front center of the power book. To remove the drive, first peel back the capped on tape covering the drive cable's connection to the logic board. Set the tape aside so we can reuse it later. You can also remove the tape covering the battery cable if there's some there. You can now carefully lift the hard drive ribbon cable connector out of its socket on the logic board. Next, remove these three Phillips screws holding the drive retainer bar in place. Then, remove the bar itself. You should now be able to remove the drive from the bay. Remove the four Phillips mounting screws from the sides of the drive. Set the plastic cover aside and carefully slide the ribbon cable's connector from the hard drive. Finally, peel off the rubber foam bumper from the bottom of the drive and we're ready to install our new drive. Place the plastic cover over the bottom of the new hard drive. 
then secure it in place using the four mounting screws. Next, attach the ribbon cable to the new drive, making sure that the four offset pins remain uncovered. Finally, reattach the rubber bumper to the opposite end of the drive. Your new drive is now ready to install. Move the speaker wire out of the way and slide the drive back into its bay. You can then place the wire back under the ribbon cable and press the ribbon cable connector back into place. Next, set the retaining bar back into place and secure it with its three Phillips screws. Finally, replace any capped on tape you removed earlier to help keep things in place. To replace the top case, first set it along the hinge edge of the power book and reattach the keyboard ribbon cable. Set the top cover back into place, make sure all of the tabs are on the inside, then push down along the edges. Next, replace the two Torx T6 screws in the corners near the hinge edge. Then, close the power book and flip it over. Replace the two pairs of screws along the hinge edge with the longer screw from each pair going in the centermost hole. You can now replace the three longer screws on the side with the power adapter. Then the three shorter screws along the other side. Next, replace the four long screws along the hinge edge on the bottom. Then, replace the two screws in the battery bay and the two in the memory compartment. Replace the lower memory module by lining up the notch in the module with the pin in the slot and sliding it in at an angle until it's fully seated. Then, push down on the edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process for the top module. To finish closing up the power book, set the memory cover into place and secure it with its four Phillips screws. Finally, set the battery back into the bay and push down to make sure it locks into place. You may now flip your power book over, open it up, and turn it on.